So yeah, please um, tell me your name and a little bit about yourself, Manville. My name's Manville Jennings, and I live in. Okay, hold on. When I found out about my. Jesus, I just get a blank every time I talk. Um, because what I want to say is that when I. We're going to have an explosion, a virtual epidemic of people developing this disease. And we as a society are, are woefully underprepared for this. Uh, we are not ready for this tidal wave. Tell me, which lines up here are the same as these two down here? And this one is pointing up, just like that one is pointing up. I see. Okay. When they told me, you know, well, you have Alzheimer's, I said, well, great, because I thought I was, you know, going crazy. The disease is a progressive disease. It starts out, you know, very modestly, oftentimes with uh, people all of a sudden realizing that they have some memory issues. And then it progresses over a period of time where it becomes uh, really a very debilitating disease. It, it's affected my life. There's so many things that I can't do that I used to be able to do. The type of care that is required really depends on the stage of the disease. Uh, well, I can't drive anymore. I have problems uh, with... Um... When a person develops dementia, functions that they used to enjoy are gradually eroded over time. And that requires their family members and loved ones uh, and the community of support around them to constantly be sort of shifting up the, the level of support that's provided. And you're independent with respect to your ability to dress yourself oh, yes. and yes. all of those things. Mm -hmm. And how are your spirits doing? Is this depressing you? Does it make you anxious or I, do you no, feel pretty even really. killed? I just take it. I mean, there's not much I can do about it, so. <laughs> Come on in and have a seat. A lot of people don't want to talk yeah. about dementia. Yeah, they don't they want to, just don't want to. They want to yeah. talk about other things. Friends and family don't really understand, you know, the whole thing. Any specific topic that you'd want to discuss and bring up that I could <clears throat> bring to group, knowing that other people struggle with the same issues? Yeah. Ask everyone what their situation is, is there, and that gets people talking. The real idea for creating a multidisciplinary memory care program was to get us all under one roof so that we could collaborate more readily and have closer cross-referral to one another. We have a neurologist, a psychiatrist, a geriatrician, a social worker, a neuropsychologist, a marriage and family therapist, also wonderful nurse practitioners. It is estimated that for every one person with the disease, there are three people that are providing care. In the United States right now, there are over 15 million people that are taking care of the 5 million people with the disease. And there are relatively few places around the country that have this sort of combination of resources and activities going on. And uh, here in Rochester, we're very fortunate to have that. So, uh, you know, we're really lucky here. Um, you know, we, we probably couldn't be in a um, better doctors who knows about um, Alzheimer's. I, I, I look at Susan more of a friend than anything. Yeah, I mean, she really cares. Manville's been a great help to me. because I facilitate this group, but it's difficult sometimes, as Manville knows. <laughs> so I use him as my sounding board. I mean, you've been a big help, and you've given me lots of suggestions. There is research going on here that is internationally recognized. Most of the physicians in, in the practice here are involved in research and are researchers themselves. Many of the new drugs that are out there um, have, have been developed and tested on individuals that have participated in clinical trials um, here at the University of Rochester. And this clinic is a model of taking translational medicine all the way from bench to bedside and then taking it also then further into the family and the community. People are looking at ways that they can make a difference for society and their children and grandchildren because the discoveries uh, that we make today are going to probably make the biggest difference um, somewhere down the line, maybe 10 years down the line. I never liked being in front of the camera, but I guess maybe it might help someone else. I mean, I know that, you know, you're not going to find a 
career in my lifetime. Patients need to understand that life doesn't stop at the diagnosis of one of these diseases. Life is still worth living. People love you. People care about you. You can be a model of how to live and grow old for people. And there's a lot of devotion to not just crying uncle in the face of the biology of these disorders. We have things to do. We get by pretty good. We have good days, bad days. But, I mean, that's life. <laughs> There's a lot of things that we still want to do. We're not going to let it stop us. God, a nice day. <laughs>